Want to learn how to add a submit button to your PDF in Adobe Acrobat so that your users can submit their form to you? Hey, it's Arit with Esatino Media, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. There's actually a very simple way to do it, a basic version, which I'll show you first, and then I'll show you the more advanced way, which is how to customize the submit button depending on what you need. So let's get started. So I have a form pulled up. Um, this is one of the forms that I designed for a client of ours. And I'm just gonna scroll down to the last page here. What you wanna do is go to the prepare form option. So I'm using the newer interface of Adobe and that's under all tools and prepare a form. If you're using the older version, meaning it doesn't look exactly like this, these exact same tools will be on the right hand side. So just keep that in mind. You're going to look for prepare a form. So hit that and then you're going to select the button option and hover over to wherever you want to place the button. So I'm going to probably place it somewhere in the middle here and then I'm going to extend the length of it. So I'm going to hit that. I'm going to I basically just clicked down in order to place the button. And then I'm going to select this cursor and click on the button and then just adjust the sides like so, clicking and dragging. So I think that's a pretty good size. The next thing we're going to do is program this button and give it a label. We need to go to the properties area and you can either double click on the button or right click and select properties. So I'll just double click on this. Your box will likely open on the general tab. So you wanna give your button a name. I'm going to write submit. And the tooltip is basically when they hover over the button, what do you want that little tip to say? So we can just say, submit your form and I'll show you what this looks like as we preview it. You don't really need to touch anything else. Again, I'm showing you the very simple way before we go into deep customizations of this button. If you just want to create a simple submit button where they hit the submit and it basically emails this form to you, this is how to do it. So you want to go to in the options tab, go to where it says label only. This is basically what you want to see, what you want to have on the button. And again, if we're keeping things simple, we're just going to have the label on it that says submit form or submit. Um, this is the text that's going to be on the button that the user sees. There are options to add icons and customize the placement of those icons if you wish. But again, we're just keeping it simple for now. You can leave all of this as is, then go to actions, leave the trigger as mouse up, which basically means when the user clicks on the button and releases the mouse, then that's when the action is triggered. So we're going to leave it on mouse up. And then if this doesn't already say submit a form, you just need to click this little drop down arrow and then it's on the bottom here select the action of submit a form okay and we're going to add the action now so click on add in this box here you're going to tell it where to submit the form so if you want this form to be emailed to you then you just need to type out mail to colon and then the email address that you want it to go to no spaces whatsoever. So it's exactly how you see here. Mail to, uh, let me see if I can zoom in here for you. Or we'll probably do the zooming in in post editing. So that's all you need to write here. And then select where it says export format, select PDF, the complete document. All right. So this is where, and I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to select that and hit close. And let's preview what this looks like. You see that little tool tip that comes up? It says submit your form. You can That's what we just customized. And then when I click on it and release, it's going to ask the user to select their email application. So with, if they have Outlook or Webmail, they can select that here and then continue. It's going to open up the email on their desktop or on their laptop and it'll have all of the information already in there and you can just they can just hit send. So that's how to do it the simple way. I'm just going to hit cancel on that. If you want to customize this further, let me show you a little bit more about what you can do. Um, if that's not what you want, you're looking for something a little bit different. So again, we're going to go to prepare form, but first I have to hit on the exit preview area here. 
on the top right. Let's double click on this to open the properties box again. If you want to customize the appearance of the button, meaning the color of the button, you can see here it's customizing it, uh, the border color, the thickness color, the text color, the font size, the font, anything like that can all be customized from this area, as you can see here. All right, the position is, you know, pretty much you can just select the position of the button, so we don't need to worry about anything here. Let's go to the options part again. So this is where if you wanted to add an icon, let's just say, you know, we want the icon on the left and then the label text on off to the side, then this is where we would select this option, hit choose icon, and you would need to pull an icon from your computer. So browse for one, find something, let's just say, you know, this right here, this QR code is the icon. It's going to, and then hit OK, it's going to place the icon to the left. So you can really, you know, maybe it's an arrow or something like that, a download button, anything like that, you can customize it. So I'm just gonna clear that. The next thing you could do, and by the way, you can also customize the way that the button looks with that icon, depending on whether the user clicks on the button or releases it or hovers on it. You can see here the behavior of when that shows up. It, you can really get very detailed here. But I think some most of you will want to know more about how to customize the different actions of the submit button. For the most part, I think, you know, we're okay with having the trigger being mouse up so when they release the mouse, trigger the action. But if you wanted to play with other ones, you have other options here. When it comes to submitting a form for the action and customizing what that looks like, in this box you have different options. So maybe you want the data to be sent to a specific location on your server. So you can add that URL in here as well. So for example, just to give you an example, if it's myserver.com slash CGI dash bin, you know, whatever the location of your URL, you can put that in here. However, if you are exporting the format as an FDF, you want to make sure that in the URL, you have this piece here, hashtag or pound sign FDF. And what FDF means is it's going to export the data to that location. So whatever is in the fields in the form, it's going to export that information. It's not going to send the PDF file to you. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you do use that format, you can decide uh, or let the program know whether to add in, to include the comments or, or anything like that. HTML is pretty straightforward. It exports the information as in an HTML format. XFDF is a XML file. It's gonna export it as an XML file. And again, if you're listening to this being like, I don't know what any of that means, the simplest thing for you to do is just have it be exported or, or mailed the PDF to you uh, so that you can see that file. Perhaps, you know, if you really want, let's say all of this information to be exported to your server or on a spreadsheet, that's when you kind of need to, to, to bring in a more advanced knowledge with these forms and perhaps use JavaScript coding in the form to have it be exported in that way. So there's, it, there are possibilities of getting more organized with the way that it exports the data. But you know, if you just wanna keep things simple, just put in your email address there and have it export the PDF to you so you can just see one by one what, what people are, um, are saying in the forms and then saving it on your computer that way. The other thing to keep in mind as well, if you're using any of these other export formats, you can also let the um, software know whether you want to export only specific fields rather than all of the fields. With this option, you, you'll see you won't be able to, it'll just send you the whole PDF, right? And you can also, with these other options, let them know uh, let the program know what dates, um, whether you want the, them to convert the dates to the standard format. So these are the little specific options that you have in submitting a form. The other question as well that I get is, well, what if I do have, you know, the mail to, it's being mailed to me, but what if I want the user to be able to use a different email program besides webmail, like what if they don't have webmail on their on their computer? You see here, when I clicked on it, it's 
it has de uh, default email application as well as webmail. So if, you know, let's say for example, you want this to open up in Gmail or, because the, the, the user could have a different email program that they use, not necessarily Outlook. So in that case, again, you will need to use a, a JavaScript code and run a specific code that will enable that particular email software to be used when um, when someone submits the hit button or the submit button. And the way you would do that is, again, I'm just gonna cancel this. So again, the way you would do that is let's hit exit preview, go back, double click this. So instead of submit a form in the actions tab, you would select run a JavaScript and you would add that, paste the script in here uh, to, to open up Gmail or a specific email client and then when you hit okay, it's going to trigger that action as well. And as you can see here, you can have it trigger multiple actions. So it doesn't need to just be the one action. So there you have it. That's how to add a submit button to your PDF form. If you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button to let others know this is good content. And if you use the software very frequently, we do have a full playlist of how-to tutorials on how to use and create forms in Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. So I'll link to that playlist in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.